I believe that we should back this new board with understanding the end result is the only thing that we're interested in, the end result. And I think if we come up with a good board, and hopefully we will, and set it up on a business-like basis, that uh, the air will clear. And I see no reason that the city and county can't come together on this thing as we have in the past. In fact, I'm quite, quite sure we, we can. And of course, we're all, all hoping and praying. This is uh, Governor Connolly's words. They achieved the victory. He said, uh, cited Yarborough's record on school busing to, ra to achieve racial integra integration. And the statement that they made was that uh, I had, uh, I ran off to keep from voting on it, that I was for school busing. This is uh, to achieve racial integration. This is an absolute falsehood. We had three votes on that one Saturday, normally on a critical vote in the Congress, your critical votes come on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. I left to come back to Texas to answer some of the charges of my opponents, and that Saturday, Mike Mansfield called for the vote on Saturday, and I missed those three. Senator, from time to time, you've made statements that uh, the city of Dallas is against you. You still feel Oh, no, way. no, I didn't make that. That was, uh, that's the kind of propaganda my opponent put out. Came up here and said I had a dislike Dallas because I hadn't cared. This is a piece of folly. What about the I, Dallas Morning News and the Times Herald? Well, I haven't gone around. I'm no Spyro Agnew. I believe in all the Constitution, not merely that for religious freedom. I believe in freedom of the press, too. I didn't come up and say they ought to be obliterated because they're erroneous. I hope to, I hope to enlighten them someday. I I believe there are times when we need a one-year budget. As Governor Preston Smith has supported a two-year budget and has cost us a lot of money in the process. Second, I oppose the conference committee approach, which allows a few legislators to plot the will of the majority by funding their own pet projects. Governor Smith has tacitly supported this procedure. Third, I favor federal revenue sharing. Governor Smith does not. Fourth, I would create an economy commission. Governor Smith would not. Fifth, I intend to communicate with the taxpayers. Governor Smith has failed to communicate. If we don't put our fiscal house in order, we may see a taxpayer's revolt. Well, I think there's always a problem with, uh, you know, how the funds that are available to a university which has as large a graduate program as North Texas State has. And um, surely this is one of the elements that has to be taken into consideration. Why did you feel that uh, the university couldn't continue or couldn't get its money with you as its head? I wouldn't want to phrase it quite like that. I made a <clears throat> decision based upon many factors, mm -hmm. including the attractiveness of going home to, going home is a, perhaps a strange phrase to use, I've been away about 20 years. But going back to my native state of Iowa, where I understand uh, things perhaps better than I would in Texas. We are still counting on the mayor's sense of fairness, and we intend to impress on him this evening the importance of his getting all the light he can on our problem. We do not see how he can come to a fair decision without hearing all our experts. So far, he has heard only one. We have two more. These experts have the highest qualifications. We do not understand why the mayor will defend bringing outside experts into Dallas to testify on the city hall problem while appearing reluctant to hear outside experts on the Fair Park problem. Now, 
Now, we've had a motion to rescind whatever action we took at the last Monday, wasn't it? Motion in second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Carried and so ordered. You vote no. John, you vote aye. I vote. If you want to call the vote again, Judge, we can do it over. All right. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Aye. And I vote aye. Oh, yes. So, I mean, vote no. If we uh, vote aye to uh, Can we do rescind, it rescind, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the vote is four to one, is that right? Four to one, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Does the USO in itself operate systems or, or cater to particular problems of psychiatric nature with men in the service? Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, it uh, provides a uh, recreational outlet for men in the service. It provides uh, some uh, companionship for uh, the servicemen that are uh, distant from their own homes, and it does not uh, uh, get especially for any uh, emotional problems that they have, although. Uh, uh, we will listen to them. The Congress can cut off money for the armed forces. They can say, we won't give a dime for the Navy. But if they do give a dime, and there's one ship, the President of the United States is Commander-in-Chief of it, not the Congress. Uh, so that uh, unless they knock out the Pentagon and uh, appropriate no money for any of our armed forces, they cannot control what the Commander-in-Chief does with those armed forces. Well, the 
situation has been steadily deteriorating worldwide because we've dawdled and dawdled and dawdled in Vietnam. We've said uh, for five, six years it's too dangerous to do anything because Red China might intervene or the Soviet Union might escalate it into all-out war. These are all possibilities, but they're lesser risks. There's very little danger of either of those two. And the other risks that we were ignoring were the risks, for example, that Mao Zedong dies and you watch the Chinese armed forces go right back into Moscow's camp. Then Moscow controls them both. Or Mao gets enough missiles so he can unload them on us, and then we're really in trouble. Or uh, our allies, further and further, more and more of them pull away from us. Or our own administration loses more and more support in the United States, which is what it has done these last two or three years. They always worried about the hypothetical risk of what might happen if we took a strong stand and ignored the risks of what was certain to happen if we, if we didn't. And I haven't mentioned the biggest one. The biggest one was that we get more and more bagged, bogged down in the, middle, uh, in the Far East and the Middle East or Central Europe break out. The two greatest threats we face today are not in Vietnam and Cambodia. One is the hundred and some East European divisions on the border of West Germany and the other is the Middle East. I don't like to get my country bogged down just by waiting and waiting. I'm a surgeon, and once in a while we have to intervene, and we take a chance, and the patient may die but there's less risk than to just allow the malignant process to spread. Do you feel then that we should go ahead and make a quick end to the war using military no, force? No, we can't Vietnam? at this time. We should have in the beginning. This was the great mistake. Not that we went in, but that at, uh, President Johnson, at the time he uh, uh, escalated our forces in February of 1965, didn't go ahead and say to them, now call off this aggression against the South and let the South Vietnamese have their independence, or else we're going to destroy your military targets military targets, not mass populations the way we did in Germany and so on. We talk about My Lai, actually one night and two hours we killed 200,000 Germans and uh, civilians in Dresden, which wasn't even a military target. 